Welcome to Fit Body Lifestyle, the show where we dive deep into the world of fitness, health, business, relationships, and the art of living a balanced life. I'm Jamie. And I'm Greg, and we're here to give you the benefit of our experiences in the fitness and bodybuilding industry, the corporate world, running a business, personal development, and building healthy relationships. Whether you're sweating it out in the gym, hustling in your business, or seeking balance in your everyday life, you're in the right place. So lace up those sneakers and grab that water bottle and let's get ready to transform our minds, our bodies, and our lives. Welcome back to Fit Body Lifestyle. We are so excited about our episode today because we have a special guest, coach and IFBB pro, Hannah DeVore. Hi, Hannah. Hello. Welcome, Hannah. Hello. Thank you for having me. Thank this you is really for being cool. here. I'm really excited for you guys. Yeah, we'd love to hear you just introduce yourself and tell the listeners a little bit, a little bit more about you that that ha that don't already know who you are. Okay, cool. So um, yeah, I've been with Fit Body Fusion. This is going to be my tenth year. I joined when we were we were out in Sacramento. We were operating out of a tiny gym. I've gotten to see the team grow throughout the years, you know, and um, it's just it's it's just been amazing. Um, and I am currently living in Buffalo, New York. So I'm from California, living in Buffalo now. I spent a long stint in corporate marketing in the food industry. Um, and some of that kind of plays into like things that we might talk about or, you know, into my coaching. Um, and, you know, I was doing fitness stuff on the side. I was competing. I was like starting to do kind of dabble in coaching, getting mentored by Jamie. Um, and then finally, a year and a half ago, I was able to leave the corporate world and go full time with the fitness and bodybuilding and Fit Body Fusion stuff. So I love it. Yeah. You're, you're one of our OGs. <clears throat> One of the OGs, yes. yes. Yes, we have such a such a fun story because I and we we share this sometimes because I'll never forget the first time you walked into the gym and you yeah. you know said oh, I yeah. think I want to compete and you actually were thinking about a different coach and I'm like can I have you please <laughs> yeah. yeah I think we ended up talking that day for like two hours we were in this like tiny office there were I don't even know how many people were on the team like ten people on the team or yes. something like we were so small and I had done all the research I had looked at all the you know the big teams that were that were big back then at least. And I was working out. I had started lifting kind of recently at the time. I was in kind of a not so great relationship. I was just wanting to feel strong, you know, mentally, physically. And I was working out out of this tiny gym near San Francisco and started to kind of see. I was like, oh, I'm kind of getting some results here. What should I do? And then I met you guys. So. Yeah. 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 It's been such a it's been such a fun journey. And of course, we've yeah. seen the bikini category, which was brand new when you first started. Right. Right. We've seen yeah. it really evolve a lot. A lot. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That was 20, 2014 was my first show. The show that I, of course, infamously spilled water all over myself at. <laughs> oh, I was going to get that to that cool. story. Okay. 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 We'll, t we'll get there. Um, yeah. So 2014 was my first show. 2015, I got my pro card. Um, it was different. The poses were different. We had the OG bikini pose. I'm kind of still wondering if we're ever going to bring it back. I'm like, are we going to do this again? Um, I hope not. And, uh, <laughs> I mean, I can still hit it. I can still twist that way. Actually, that twist might feel better on my back. But um, yeah, yeah, it's it's evolved a lot. Um, and I've just, I've stuck with this team because as a lot of things have evolved from, you know, social media to like influencing and everything, the one constant for me is this team, you know, and we haven't changed. And it's really funny because people will meet me and, you know, they'll ask about Fit Body Fusion. They'll be, oh, yeah, I've been thinking about joining a big team like that. And I'm like, oh, yeah, big team, huh? I totally forgot. Like, because you, I'm just used to this, like just the family aspect of it. So that means everything. Well, yeah. and that and that's our goal, right? Is to yeah. to deliver that individualized experience, but then the collective of the community. Yeah, and that that's always yeah. our goal. So I don't, I don't want to get too far. Uh, we talked about a 2014 incident and water, <laughs> and I can just know how these conversations go, and we'll get deep into something else, and we won't come back to that. Okay. And people are going to say, "Why didn't they talk about the water?" <laughs> okay. So I think we should just dump it, dump or jump whatever <laughs> spill into that right now. Yeah, it's a great story yeah. because I think it's a good it's a good it's a story it's a, of a Resilience. Well, it's also a, it's also a, a good warning <laughs> to watch out for. It is a good warning. Be careful how you pee when you, when you're at your competition. Be careful the methods that you're going to use to pee because that was kind of the catalyst for it. But yeah, I, um, I was in between. I, I went up for my very first prejudging. Did very well. I was you know in the middle of of, of the first call out, so we knew that things were going to go pretty well. And then right before I went 
back on stage. Actually, was it when I went back on stage for the overall? I think I might have already placed. Yes. I think I already won. We were, you were getting ready to compete and for the I, overall. And then I had to go out <laughs> for the overall and I was like, I should probably pee really quick, of course, because that was just like, you know, first show anxiety, which is like, I should have just held it. And I see a cup and I went to grab it and it was full and it just went all over me. It was like slow motion, like a waterfall of water no. all over me. <laughs> and of course with the tan, like it just, it just immediately, I was like partially white and partially sweet potato color. So I was like, I was like a camouflage of, of white and dark brown. And the tanning company had already left. They took off. Yeah. Which, you know, I have my own thoughts about that. <laughs> but, um, luckily there was, there was someone there. I think there was someone who, who worked with, with a tanning, a different tanning company and he happened to have a DIY kit and he patched me up in the bathroom when I went back out. But, but the funny part of the story to me. You were keeping me, it together though. Oh yes. Yeah, the funny part yeah. is as I'm, I'm having this OS moment Yeah, and I just, I'm like, you kept it together so good. No problem. This yeah. is Oper not a problem Operating at all. system moment? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, system. shit moment. Oh, yeah. Okay. okay. All right. yeah, I guess I could go. say it. Right. I know. I wasn't sure. I was like, And I was like, oh, shit moment. And I'm like, but I didn't want you to panic and see and it. That's, so. that's like, that's the power of a really good coach. Because the one thing that Jamie will always do, I've seen her do it with me many times. I've seen her do it with other clients. And now, I, you know, I've kind of taken some of that for my own is that we we do the, the, the duck, you know, on the wall. Like underneath, we're like doing this. But up, but we're like everything's fine. <laughs> yes, you're doing that's great. That's a good metaphor. Yeah, because you know we have to make sure that 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 our clients' mental health stays stable right. while they're under this you know high pressure situation. So yeah, you're you're great at that. Well, well and that's the thing is like mm. we're we're being careful to watch out for your cortisol levels is the big thing because right. then really yeah very quickly we and I've seen this happen backstage where athletes panic and then all of a sudden the water retention starts coming on so oh, like immediately yeah, yeah so it was it was really cool that I was able to go find the owner he was actually the owner of the tanning company and he went okay. and found yeah, some yeah. and yeah we, yeah we patched you up and got you right back on stage but yeah. it's a great story that was such a just like first first show experience the whole thing like I had I had an experience where I met a photographer and he gave me like I had a weird feeling about him he gave me a a business card and I was like this this feels a little and he was like I'd love to take pictures of you sometime and it was my very first show and I'm and I'm getting this kind of attention for the very first time you know and and I'm and I'm kind of having to learn how to navigate what is real and what is worth you know you know, giving my time and my energy and attention to. And then also how do I kind of navigate that there's going to be some people who might want to kind of take advantage too, you know? And so that show, I learned a lot. We were looking at sponsors that show. I remember at that show, we were looking at all the booths and you were with me and you were like, don't do it yet. Wait, because I was like, I want to get a sponsor. I'm going to go over to this booth and see if they'll sponsor me. And you were like, no, 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 you're going to hold off for the really good sponsorship. And so we waited, we waited like years and there were some companies that had approached me and you were like, nope, we're waiting, we're waiting. And so I always kept that in mind still to this day that I go for like quality over quantity when it comes to sponsorships. All right, so let's let's back up a little bit um, because I want to go back to the water, okay? Okay. And, and, <laughs> and, and the reason I want to go back to the water is because I think that's a good gateway to talk about mental health and resiliency and stuff, which I know is is near and dear to your heart. Yeah. Um, but I want to back up just a little bit and just I want to want to make sure I never like to assume that everybody knows everything that we're talking about. So we're using some mm -hmm. industry lingo. Okay. So in a show. You go to the show, there's the prejudging aspect of the show. Mm -hmm. And if you're in the first call out and in the middle, yeah. generally speaking, that's a good thing. <laughs> that means you're in the thing. you're in the running yeah. for America's next top model. We never um, we never assume. That's right. We never assume, but but it's but a good it's a indicator. Good and yeah. then um, you come back for the finals, mm -hmm. and in the finals is when the awards are presented. Right. And that's when you determine that you won your class and in the NPC or the National Physique Committee that in the amateur ranks. Um, winning your class is then the gateway, and the open division that is, is the is the gateway then to the, compete for the overall. Yep. And that's what you were competing. So you right. had won your class, and we're yeah. going for the overall. Right. I just want to make sure we set the stage for everybody, yes. so we make sure we're all on the yeah. on the same planet. And I was able to go to nationals immediately after she threw me right in. Yeah. And I think it which was just right about getting the experience, which I'm really, really glad that I did it. And, um, you know, I showed up my first national show. I walk on stage. I look out in the audience, and Amanda Latona sitting right there, smiling at me, and I was like. 
I fucking did it. Like this is all. <laughs> this is. I'm good. I don't even care if I win this. I've accomplished everything. What I need was to it? Accomplish. Was it San Jose? I thought San Jose was the one I won, and then we okay. went to Vegas. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Which was an experience. It was a whole. It was a whole yeah. experience. Yeah. And 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 it was great that she she just kind of like threw me into the fire, and I think that it that was really important, and it wasn't because we thought we were gonna win it. I think it was more about getting the experience. The experience and the feedback yeah. at the yeah. end of the day. And that's what we always say. Yeah. Like, we're there for feedback. And you did yep. really well. Yeah, I actually did really well. I think I got six at you that six, show. You did. And I was stoked. Like, to be, you know, very high in the second call out. Um, Your second think, show ever. I think that back then the call outs were kind of just always five, which is now call outs are like eight. <laughs> but I was like top of the second call out. And I was like, oh, to me that was a win i was i was really happy with it which is kind of like wild we're now like you hear about girls you know landing you know their first or second or even third national show and and if they land you know fifth sixth place and they're disappointed i'm like really like that's the best outcome and yeah you're there for the feedback and you're there to now compare yourself against a completely different pool of right. physiques like now you're standing up against girls who have been here but they've been doing this they're on their way to get their pro card and the level is like completely stepped up oh, yeah. so now you need to be able to look at the photos and, and the video and, and and stack yourself you know next to those girls. we hear that all the time about well i didn't feel i didn't finish as good this year as i did last year and it's like yeah but the variables have changed right the competitors on stage have changed and even if they're the same exact competitors they They've evolved or they've changed yeah. and the judges may be different and the lighting may be there's different. always and a moving there, there's some there's yeah. something that's going to be different so focus on you all right yeah. so we got the stage set um yeah. with the water okay so that 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 nasty water was out there and and talk hana talk about the how you you've taken that lesson forward <clears throat> how you apply it how you apply it to both your life and and your coaching yeah so well in terms of um like that specific experience it's just one it's just adaptability and 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 you know and even back to the placing is like your expectations like setting your expectations um realistically and always you know hoping for the best but going into everything with realistic and kind of like either low or no expectation i like to just do no expectations <laughs> you know so um yeah and, and it's just knowing that th like you know they say progress isn't linear like the whole journey, your whole fitness journey, your bodybuilding journey, whatever you're doing, it's going to do this for everybody, even the most successful people. It's always going to do this. So I definitely apply that to my coaching. Like when girls are checking in and they're like, I had a bad week and they're beating themselves up. I'm like, welcome to being a human being. Mm -hmm. This is life. And you're going to have a really great week, you know, maybe next week or the next. But this is how it goes. It's it's always going to be peaks and valleys. And I look for the long term. And I'm sure that you guys do, too, in terms of coaching. We don't look at one week, one moment in time for a client. We'll help them with that moment. But we don't judge that moment. And we don't really use that to apply to the big picture. We look at the historical data. And we look at the long term trends. And typically, what I see in terms of a, a journey of progress is, yeah, it looks like this. But it does do this you know the long kind of like the stock market <laughs> well I, I was just gonna say exactly. yeah. when, uh, I, I know that happens and there was a time in my career in my corporate career where i was looking at my 401k every day and when i looked right. at the undulations that up and It'll down every day it drove me freaking yep. crazy and yep. the same is true for the scale if you're looking yep. at that scale and you're so fixated on the scale instead of the progress mm -hmm. and yeah. progress as you say is not linear so there can be and you know what, what my, my little metaphor is um some days are the windshield some days you're the bug and if you're having more days yeah. as a windshield then you're doing good yeah um and, th and that's what and it is, the is is the is yeah. that forward continuous progress going yeah yeah I yeah like exactly that. yeah exactly like that's why i don't i'm not going to weigh myself every single day luckily i feel super blessed that you know we all we all come into fitness with our own sort of package of trauma <laughs> you right. know our, our own history and and the stuff from our childhood that that you Always. know and the stuff from our family that is now kind of playing out and I feel super blessed that the one thing I didn't grow up with was a mom who was obsessed with a scale. And I hear that a lot in you know friends, clients. Um, that's very common, and that does. I you know I have 55 year old clients who are still dealing with the fact that when they were very small, their mom used to comment on her own weight all the time, and it still is here. And so I'm I'm very blessed that you know my mom had her own stuff. I have some 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 childhood trauma for sure um 
but uh, the scale just doesn't really bother me, especially not anymore. And I think that part of it also is the fact that we've been on this journey for so long and we've done so many reverses and cuts and I'm so realistic now about my weight. And I also know that we have control over my weight. That's the thing that I think people need to understand is that one, if you're working with a coach and if you're on some sort of a program where there are parameters and there's consistency, you should be in, mostly in control of your body. Of course, there's the asterisk around, you know, health and hormones. And if you need to get something fixed, fix it, you know. But we are in control of our bodies. It's the beauty of macros. It's the beauty of having a coach is that we can make changes. So let's say my weight spiked one week. We know that if for some reason we need it to come back down, we can make it come back down. Not a big deal at all. Like we've got tools in the toolbox, you know. But I also just I know that it does this. So I'm just trying to stay realistic, you know. One of the things I've always admired so much about you is as much as you love the competition side of things, this has always been a lifestyle since day one, since I met you. Yeah. It was a lifestyle for you before you started competing. Fitness was something that you made a priority in your life yeah. and that you love. And I've watched you go through so many seasons over this yeah. 10 ish years, right? And yeah. it's been really cool. And I think it makes you a strong coach in that, you know, you've embraced every piece of it, you know, mm -hmm. through injuries, through working through life stuff, moving yeah. stuff. Like there's just been a lot yeah. of things. And it's not always about the stage. And it's not even mm -hmm. always about, you know, growth or weight loss or whatever. I think a lot of times people get very one-sided and they're yeah. just focused on that one piece of it rather than the whole journey of it. So how yeah. have you been able to do that? How have you been able to manage mm -hmm. these things that are thrown at you and continue to make fitness such a big priority in your mm -hmm. life? I, I think it's just that I grew up <clears throat> wanting to do kind of everything. Like I've always wanted to dabble in everything. I would go play music and then I would go play golf and then I would want to be really good at snowboarding. And like, I kind of wanted to like master a lot of things. And I just wanted to have a really full life. And my dad always, um, you know, he, he would take me traveling and eating different kinds of foods. And, and he really kind of expanded like my horizons and just showed me that that there's a lot more to life. We were always doing really interesting, different things, going interesting places. Um, so now when it comes to fitness, it's like, yeah, it's my lifestyle and I love it, but it's not everything. And I've just, it's it's a piece and it's, it's not my full identity. It's not everything that I do. There are some days where I focus a lot on fitness and there are some days where I don't, I'm focusing on something else. I still like to travel. Um, I have boundaries around what my life looks like. I'm not going to give up some things for fitness. It's just bottom line, you know? So like, I'm not gonna give up traveling. Of course, there's different seasons, you know? And if I'm prepping, like I'm gonna shift priorities. Um, but I, uh, you know, my career, my corporate career was, was very important to me for, you know, a long time while I was on this journey. And I wasn't willing to sacrifice that, you know? I, I didn't want to, um, I just I, I wasn't gonna let that slip, you know, for fitness. So I don't know. I just I just try to stay well rounded. I think that that's I see the best success also in my clients who are really well rounded and who have a lot of other things that they're interested in. It really kind of keeps their head on their shoulders. And when we get too wrapped up in that one thing, we put all our eggs in that one basket. That's where it seems to kind of you know mess with us a little bit. Well, we see that a lot in this <clears throat> in, in this industry in particular. Is everybody gets so focused on that outcome right. instead of focusing on their their systems and their processes and mm. and you know the 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 actually the trip the journey, the journey itself, itself right yeah. the journey itself has has flavor to it and has moments yeah. that if you just walk by and we've talked about this before is that like our wedding we we were not fully present in our wedding because we were focused mm -hmm. on the outcome right mm -hmm. um, instead of on the pro and instead of just enjoying that process along the way and yeah. Hana, you're somebody who I think really embodies this concept or this mindset of you're a searcher. Um, you you are all you're curious. You just have this curious nature, and part of that mm -hmm. curiosity is what leads you down to different to yeah. dabbling. Yeah, um, we've dabbled I, a lot. Yeah, which, yeah. Which is, <laughs> yeah. and that dabbling is really good. I, yeah. I want to go back or not go back, but so you talked about your corporate career a little bit, mm -hmm. and man, if, if this didn't come back today, I don't know why it didn't come back before, but um, I thought about our conversation a few years ago yeah. um, when you were in, in the corporate world and you were having, mm -hmm. um, well, I, I don't want to call it a crisis, but you were having an authentic moment of, yeah. of there was questioning the purpose, right? There was that, there was that yeah. surface tension between what you were doing, 
how you felt about what you were doing <clears throat> and being your authentic self. Yeah. And I think, you know, I know you bring that to your coaching, but can, would you go into that a little bit if that's okay? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was really, I was really torn. Um, I was at a company that I loved in a job that I loved and with people that you love with yeah the whole situation was great and at the same time on the side I was doing this side hustle of starting to coach I had a very small roster I was being mentored by Jamie she was sending me off to different trainings and I knew that it was really calling to me but it was a big juxtaposition from what I was doing in my day-to-day -day work and the actual marketing and sales work that I was doing so um while I loved what I was doing, there were uh, marketing aspects. And I think we all know that marketing is very deceiving. And um, marketing is a very good thing. But at the same time, when we get up into high level corporate marketing, there's a lot of, you know, perception and, and there there is, it can be deceiving sometimes, you know, in terms of the messages that we're sending out to the world. And there were just some things that weren't really clicking for me. Um, you helped me to kind of put a positive spin on what I was doing. Um, you were like, this is still good work, you know, and you, you know, told me specifically why it was still positive and you were like, you're still doing a good thing, you know, so you weren't like pushing me out of it, but I just knew that eventually I was probably, I was probably gonna end up, you know, doing this because this is just what really calls to me. I feel like I'm really helping people on. on and and I will just tell you my perspective on that conversation. <laughs> when you, when we had that conversation, I did not, I did not want to tell you what to do. Yeah. Um, I wanted you to figure out what you wanted to do um, because and and really my only purpose in having that conversation was to give you to give you the space that you needed to make that decision um, yeah. for you not because of what I thought was right or what anybody else thought was right it was about what you think is right yeah and and that was really my 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 whole strategy if you will in the conversation yeah. is that I just wanted to be there for you to give you space and a safe space to talk about this but I knew that you were having that ethical dilemma if you will it just right. was not and by ethics I don't mean ethics in the big e ethics I mean internal ethics it just was not resonating yeah. with you yeah there are some sometimes core values where, yeah. yeah core yeah. values where you might have a couple of different values or, or you might have yeah two scenarios in your life that are kind of like pushing and pulling against each other and yeah and I think that that's that's why my relationship with you guys is mama bear, papa bear is because it's, it's a little bit less coach because you guys have literally never pushed me into anything, you know, whether it was like a show or just or doing something. Um, I've never felt pushed. It's always been like it's more guidance and also letting me learn my own lessons. You know, it comes down to the diet and the macros like you don't tell me what to eat. You know, like I've learned that and we've talked about different, you know, different foods and how they might affect me, but she doesn't, what's, what's the fish thing? Oh, yeah. you, rather you, than, rather yeah. than uh, giving you a fish, yeah. I'm going to teach you to yeah, fish. Yeah, you teach so me that, how to fish. That's basically, that's been how, how it's been since day one, you know? So I've had to, and, and that's why this, this coaching relationship and the, and the tactics and the systems that we use work for me is because I have had to still stay independent and learn my own lessons. It's kind of how I was parented by my dad. My dad wouldn't give me a curfew. He would say, when are you going to be home? And I would say, uh, 11. And he'd go, is that realistic? And I would say, OK, let's make it midnight. And he goes, great. Now you're coming home at midnight. You know, And like that was our relationship. So I think that, that I really value being able to learn my own lessons. I love that. And I think it's one of the things that makes you such a great coach as well, because I do think like being a good coach, a lot of it is figuring out when you need to educate, when you need yeah. to ask questions, because I love that asking the questions, yeah. because that helps people come to their own conclusions that also I feel like that it's going to resonate more deeply than I just say, do it because I said so. And you're like, yeah, well, that doesn't make any sense to me versus we don't learn anything. Yeah. From that. Here's, yeah. Here's yeah. some information. Here's some options. Yeah. Based on this how do you see us moving forward from that? And then yeah. you're getting, you've got buy-in, you've got, yeah. you know. Exactly, like I, I have a lot of lifestyle clients. So my, my roster is is mm, getting almost to the point where it's evenly split between lifestyle and, um, and competitors. And for a long time I was working mostly with lifestyle. And with my lifestyle clients, we have to talk a lot about eating at restaurants. Mm -hmm. 
And I love this topic because like we talk about, I can eat at any restaurant and hit my macros. I mean, any, like the most challenging restaurant down to just, you know, McDonald's. <laughs> like I can always make it work and I've got tips and tricks and hacks for all of it. So my clients will come to me and they'll say, hey, I've got this, this work dinner on Friday night. It's at this restaurant. What do I do? And I always say, so I, I have them, when, especially if they're beginners, I'll say, you know, send me the menu and let's talk about it. And I'm not, what I'm not going to do is I'm not going to say, okay, you're going to order the filet and here's how you're going to track it. What I do is I take a look at the menu and I go, what do you think is the best choice here given your macros and what you want the rest of your day to look like? And they'll go, well, hmm, I was thinking about the chicken, but then it's got that sauce on it. So I was maybe thinking about the filet. And I'm like, yeah, how about for a side? What's the simplest side that we can do? Mm, they got a baked potato. I can get this, you know. So that's how it should be rather than me just telling them what to do. you know. And then I say, cool, now go track it. And then I'll take a look and see what you did. And, you know, they might miss a couple things and I'll say, what if you added a little bit of olive oil? Because, you know, they're probably going to probably going to spray down that thing or, they're gonna, you know, there's going to be some oil on the pan. Um, so, yeah, I think that that's we should always let people kind of DIY a little bit with, you know, some guidance along the way. I love that so much. And I do feel like when people initially start macros, sometimes it can be a little bit it, yeah. it could feel very intense and yeah. heavy. They're like, tell me, what, tell me what to eat. <laughs> tell, just, just give me a meal it. plan. <laughs> Somebody referred to it as uh, macro Tetris the other day. Yeah. It is, oh, it is yeah. Tetris. Yeah. It's, you're just trying Making to things make fit. things yeah. fit. You know what? You know what macros are to me? What I realized I've started I've started calling it this in the past like year or so. Tracking macros and becoming an expert macro tracker, getting to that point, you are living in the matrix. All of a sudden, <laughs> a veil is lifted and you go. First of I all, see the numbers. everything I thought about food was wrong. Yes. Everything that my family thinks about food is wrong. Everything that we see in food marketing is, is a, deceiving. Kind of, is, is Let's just say deceiving. deceiving. Okay. Um, everything that we see in diet culture is just straight up wrong. Um, and you, I mean, it's, it's wild how much all of a sudden you see and you just go, wow, I know exactly what I'm putting in my body. This is so weird. And you're looking out at the rest of the world and the rest of the world doesn't know what they're putting in their body. And you feel like you're living in the matrix. And that's why I'm so hot on macros, and I probably will be forever, is because I feel like I discovered something that the rest of the world needs to know. Like if I could go on my soapbox and just talk to everyone, like that's why I'm doing it right here, is because it's, it's, it's just amazing knowledge that you'll use your entire life that the average person does not know. It's, it's wild. The conversations I have with family members who, who don't know about macros and they have to go off of what they see on like, I don't know, the news or something or like magazines. And it, it's, it's really wild how it opens your eyes. It's the most eye-opening thing I've ever done. It's the best thing I've ever done for myself is probably. You're literally giving me chills because I can relate so much to this. I remember when I first, because back when I first started doing macros, it was kind of taboo. And yeah. then everybody <laughs> thought, you know, we were IFFYM. We thought, you know, if it fits your macros. We were so silly. Yeah. You, you yes. forgot to add the. Uh... Back in my day. Back in my day. People weren't taking us seriously. <laughs> oh, they were. They were making yeah. fun of us. They were mm -hmm. like, oh, you guys are just eating Pop-Tarts and this and that. Mm -hmm. But what what we ended up discovering is, you know, when you have your macros set, in order to fit these kinds of really processed types of foods, especially because we also like to control for fiber and sodium, mm -hmm. it, it doesn't fit. It's not, it, and plus you'd be starving if you ate a bunch yeah. of processed, if you're eating Pop-Tarts all day. Yeah. Not to say you can't fit one in depending mm -hmm. on where your macros are, but yeah. again, you, you know, wh what I found that, that I did over time is I just started gravitating more naturally towards these, you know, higher, you know, nutrients types yeah. of food because they were more satiating and, yeah, and that kind of thing. And it was like, it was almost like, having permission to have the yeah. other things was enough to not make me feel like I needed to do it as frequently. True. Um, so I love so much that you said that. And, and, you know, I tell people it's like anything else you want out of life, like committing that time and energy to doing it and learning yeah. it, even when it's hard, you know, cause now yeah. we can literally in our heads calculate yep. what we've had for the day without tracking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We're like, boom, boom, boom. Yeah. You know, if I've, if I have a client who's struggling with macros and I have them on a five day split and they're like really struggling and they're not able to do their, their meal prep and their, and their macro planning and actually make it fit. I'll usually pull out a workout. I'll go down to four days of lifting and I'll give them an hour back in their week. And I'll say, this is your hour now where you're going to, you know, spend some time learning this skill because I know you can go to the gym. I know you can do lateral raises and squats like this skill though Let's master this you're first. going to use yeah. this beyond me you're not going to have a coach the rest of your life you're going to use this knowledge 
whether you're tracking or not, you're going to use this knowledge. Literally, I think I'm going to use this until I die. You know, I'm going to know there are things I can't unlearn. <laughs> there are things I can't unsee now. And it's just, it's, it's really, really incredible knowledge. I think that, um, I think that kids should be taught at least some portion of this in, you know, in a really, of course, safe way for, from childhood. I think that we should know the composition of our food. We're just told, well, this is good and this is bad. Mm -hmm. I think that we should know the composition and what it means to get protein and what what carbs versus fat and ratios mean, you know. Well, I think as we were talking about this, honey, I, I'm, I'm mindful of the abundance versus scarcity mindset and how much the macro, that macro lifestyle really fits into an abundance mindset is that, yeah. and it's not, I mean, in, in my, in some ways of thinking the, the pop tart mindset is, uh, is not, that's a scarcity mindset. I can only have five pop tarts for my day and, I, and yeah. fit my macros versus yeah. look, an abundance mindset, how much can I fit into my macros, but also keeping it yeah. simple and, and controllable. And parameters right. around it. Like here's the thing we it's like people who don't want to track their food and i can understand there's there's different reasons not to track their food but if if like think about saying i'm going to go on a road trip i'm going to go on this on this really long road trip yeah but i'm, I'm not going to worry about like like filling up my gas tank or how much is in my gas tank and i might just overfill it and like we have tool in in outside of macros like outside of eating there are so many tools and like measurements that we use throughout our day mm -hmm. and parameters that we put on things like we literally we have a gas tank in our car and let's say it's 16 gallons your car is saying this is how much fuel i need please fill up 16 gallons don't give me 25 it's gonna spill over you know and like we use these things we have a speedometer on our car it's also like saying i'm gonna go on a road trip and i'm just i'm i'm just gonna cover up my speedometer I'm just not even going to know, am I going too fast, too slow? Like we use data and measurements and numbers for literally everything. And then Those people don't want to use numbers and data for their food. And I understand that there is a big intuitive aspect to our eating and we have to be in touch with hunger cues and we do need to be able to eat intuitively. But why not learn using parameters first and then eventually transition into intuitive eating, which like I've done a lot of that with my lifestyle girls is like, getting the knowledge around macros and then transitioning smoothly into intuitive eating without, so intuitive eating basically meaning, you know, knowing what your body needs without having to specifically track it. Well, the, the old saying here is ignorance is bliss. And I do, I do think that there's a safety aspect in not knowing what's going into your food. And, you know, the story I th we've told, and if we haven't told it, we'll tell it now, is that um, there was uh, a particular food item that I liked. It was a chicken pot pie. Not not the ones from... Um, <laughs> you ruined this yeah. one. Yeah. Chicken and, pot pie. So, and I loved it. I mean, it was... And I can't remember. It was, I think it was... <laughs> no, it no, was from restaurant. restaurant. We don't even get the restaurant. Yard house. Oh, okay. Yard house. Ooh, and, boy. man, I would guess. tell you, I just loved that stuff. And, and then Jamie pulled up the macros. Oh, I'm sure it was... Like, like 23 oh my I do this to him all the time. I'm like, when, do you want to know how when, you want to know the macros of what you're eating? Macros, I do no. this with Andy yeah. all the time. Yeah. yeah, Andy and I will we, we play games. We'll be driving and he'll go, How many carbs <laughs> do you think or hey, do you think there's more carbs or fat in the cheesecake factory tortellini pasta? And I'll go, you know, and I'll and I'll I'll make a guess, and then we'll track it and we'll see how like close I get. That's fun. Yeah, it's kind of a fun game. But again, we're just learning about the things That's we right. put in our body. Why wouldn't we learn about the things we put in our body? If a doctor gives you a prescription, why wouldn't you go research that? Why wouldn't you because know? Because it's safe. Because it's safe to not ask the question. Bliss, yeah. And and, yeah. and 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 I will tell you, I'm a, I'm I'm as much a I hate to be that way in, at times, but there's a time when I'm just it's safe, and and yeah. sometimes just not knowing the truth is easier right. for me. But yeah. let, let me can we pivot just a little bit? Yeah. Um, because I just want to talk, as as we talk about this, uh, the 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 Hano divorce story. Um, I I just there's this nutritional aspect which we've been talking about, and there's great stuff. I mean, we could fill. All I can this, talk this about macros for like way too long. <laughs> well, let's My talk about clients. the let's talk about the physical part. <laughs> okay. 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 Um, because with you, I know that you have struggled with some injuries. Yeah. And I know that you are big on incorporating other elements into your training uh, beyond the bodybuilding or beyond the mm. just the straight resistance <clears throat> training. So uh, yeah. let's let's dive into that a little bit. Yeah. 
So um, I've had some lower back stuff going on for a long time, and my suspicion is that it comes from a combination of the bikini posing, posing on one side, twisting, cranking, holding for very long periods of time, and not always posing on the other side, which my coach says I'm supposed to be doing. So if I'm, Listen if to if that I'm twisting message. to the right, <laughs> I should be countering it with a twist well, why, to the why left. Why would you do that, Hannah? Because balance. Well, because yeah, because you don't go to the gym and just train one <laughs> one arm, right? You exactly. go, you go unless you're a maybe exactly. a, a and because arm wrestler. Yeah, but, yeah, it's stressful on the body, yeah. especially when we get on stage, and then we're really holding it for like long periods of time. It's it's a lot. So I think that it was a combination of the twist. So I've basically got like really really tight QLs, basically. QL. Um, yeah. QL. Yeah. Define. Q- <laughs> quadratus <laughs> lumbar. <laughs> it's your, basically your like lumbar muscles. In, yeah, it's yes. it's basically my my lumbar. Quadratus lumbaris, yeah. I think, is what it is. Lumbaris. Yeah. Um, it sounds like a Harry Potter. It does. <laughs> it does. Yeah. It does. It's a spell. Quadratus <laughs> lumbaris. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so so pain in my in my low back. Um, luckily, like not like a sciatica type thing, which is you know thank God. Um, but I think it was a combination of the posing and also being in the off season and going, I'm going to be a power lifter. And like, but just kind of just throwing that out there and just going in and just deadlifting 300 pounds, you know, and, and, and probably could have, you know, I was a little bit younger in my journey and I probably could have worked up to that a little bit and focus more on mobility. So um, kind of the beast mode thing we talk there about was a sometimes. <laughs> bit of beast mode and just getting really, you know, I was super excited to be bodybuilding and to be lifting heavy weight. And there's just something that happens that I'm sure a lot of people listening to this know when you're lifting heavier and heavier and heavier, it's just, you're getting so much fulfillment from it. It's just like, I can do all the hard things. And I think I just, I think I push myself really hard there. And then with posing and then maybe stress and also corporate jobs, sitting at the computer, driving in my car, I used to have a really long commute, you know? So um, I've had a lot of low back stuff. you You missed one element, by the way. What? Age. And, and yeah, and, and for I don't sure. mean and, totally. and, not, and the I don't care whether you're stress over yeah, the years. I don't care whether you're 21 totally. or, or 41 or 51. Yeah. We are from the moment we are born, we are degenerating in so, <laughs> yeah. some way. Yeah. So your and your spine in particular, we put yeah. a lot of stress on it. So it's a I think you're right. It's a totally. combination of factors. Yeah, yeah, I think and and for me now it's just like sitting, you know, sitting yeah. is really hard. So um so I've gone through all of these different I've tried every single type of body work, chiropractic, you know, sports therapist. Um, you know, I, I do my yoga. I do a lot of mobility drills now. I do like a lot of stretching. Um, and I've seen all of these different types of body work people. Um, the number one thing though, that I'm going to say that really helps me is my own stress management and my own inflammation management, which I have control over those two things. So even more so than going to a specialist or having someone dig into my QL or having someone cut me, um, cup, cup me, not cut me. Um, uh, <laughs> I will cut you. <laughs> <laughs> and, Much houses by proxy? What, what do we got going on here? I mean, I would love to, for, I would love to get a QL transplant, please. Um, uh, and you know, I, I'm, I've been really liking dry needling lately, but at the same time, I still notice I can be doing all of those things if my stress is out of control and if if my inflammation is is kind of out of control, then that's where the flare ups really happen. So I've been I've been easing off of some of those therapies just a little bit because I'm realizing how much of this is within my own control and my own lifestyle habits and my own stress management. Um, even down to taking better care of myself in the week leading up to my period and the first couple days of my period where it does tend to flare up the most. So I've been really hardcore lately about dropping my own inflammation in the seven days leading into my period. And I'm actually seeing mental health improvements and back health improvements. So, so I'm listening to you. Oh, I'm sorry. No, I was just going to say, I want to hear more specifics about how yeah. you're how you're doing that. that like yeah, what are that, some that, of the... Yeah. I, I, that's exactly my yeah. question is when you say yeah. stress management, what, what do you mean? So, so and inflammation. inflammation. Those are, yeah. those are yeah. the two things. Yes. So And like, especially like, so that week leading in, into my period, um, backing off of caffeine for those seven days. Mm. And then, you know, as soon as it starts for me, I have to. Um, a lot of that has to do with the anxiety, which then, of course, is going to translate throughout my body. Um, but I was noticing my anxiety and my stress ramp up in that week leading up to. So I was like, what can I do to, to bring that down? Can I reframe one thing? Yeah. You don't have to. 
You get you to. You choose to. I choose to. I want to. Okay, and you get yeah. to, right? Yes. So, and, 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 I, and I don't mean to pick, pick that, but that, that's yeah. a really big thing uh, in yeah. terms. And, Hannah, I know you know that. So, yeah. um, I, I just, anyway, I, I don't mean to derail us. I, <laughs> I'm going to try not to say no, try. No, we don't say try. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so stress uh, management. And uh, dropping, sh- you know, sugar. Like, literally, it's just, yeah, I'm allowed with my macros. I'm allowed to eat whatever I want. And also, at the same time, I notice a response. I notice a physiological response when I... I am taking in a lot of, you know, processed sugar items. I notice the inflammation. Um, so, yeah, so there's, you know, better sleep, you know, more yoga, kind of altering my training a little bit if needed. Um, but, yeah, that's – that's. Are, are you, you know, managing your stress um, – pro- what's the word I'm looking for – prophylactically or are you waiting until stress accumulates or is it a little bit of both? I would rather not wait. I would rather do it proactively – than reactively, right? Because then, I mean, I'm not really, that's, that doesn't really work as well for me. So I, I'm, I'm trying to, um, or I am. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> uh, incorporating all of the things that I know that if I do them consistently, they work. Like it works if you work it, you know? So staying on yoga, staying on things like journaling and meditating. I'm not gonna wait. Well, okay. You can wait until you're stressed. If you're really stressed, you can sit down and meditate. It's gonna have a great impact right then. And also, if you have a consistent meditation practice, even if it's just five minutes a day, you're going to notice that life just kind of gets a little bit better. Yeah. You know? And, and if I can do a disclaimer on this for just a second, because we know your journey and how much you've experimented with these things to figure out what works for you. Mm. And correct me if I'm wrong, but in terms of the advice that you would be giving to somebody, you would give them, hey, these are tools, but you need to figure out what works best for you just the same way that I figured out what works best for me. Yeah, we have to do the journey. We just have to do the testing and the learning. And there's no, that's why, you know, it's like everyone just goes on Instagram and just looks for, what am I supposed to do today? Can someone just tell me? Mm -hmm. Can someone tell me what I'm supposed to do today? safe. Like, um, I'm I'm very hesitant to do one of those, uh, here's my morning routine videos. Because my morning routine is kind of ever evolving, and I'm still test. I'm literally still testing and learning. This is there is no destination. There's not one day in fitness or in health where we go. Cool, I got it. I'm good. I got it. It's like every day is testing and learning, and that's once you can embrace that, you can have so much fun. If you don't like the fact that you're testing and learning and sometimes failing, you're not going to have a great time. So. I love that. To, to me, it's it's we talk about we love Brene Brown so much, and yeah. she talks about how if you're not at, getting you're not out there in the you know getting vulnerable and getting out in the ring. And I do I you know I love I think of all people I've watched you be so willing to be open and experiment with different things to figure out what works for you. And I think what's ended up happening is number one you've come up with some really good tools for yourself and you've got this whole toolbox yeah. that you can help your clients with and i feel like i, I relate to you a lot in that as well because I, you and you've seen me go down different yeah, journeys we tried and, everything yes and, yeah you know for some people let's say a vegan diet might work better mm-hmm. for them for someone else that that doesn't work for them at all and yeah i love that you talked about your menstrual cycle and the things that you've noticed that you know okay maybe you can have a little bit more caffeine outside of that time but during that time yeah. you know it's going to cause for me it doesn't work yeah and so then when my clients are checking in and you know and i notice on my tracker that they're five days out for their from their period and they happen to note in their biofeedback wow i'm so anxious this week i might say how much coffee are you drinking and they might go girl i'm i'm i do like four cups a day and 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 an energy drink in the afternoon and some pre-workout here's an opportunity (laughs) like coaches are always just kind of scanning the room for opportunities and we're just like What's the current situation and where is there an opportunity to optimize something or to do something different, change the approach, you know? So, yeah, I believe that I can really only prescribe things that I've tried myself, you know, that I have like real, you know, evidence of and that I've really felt like I can talk about a vegan diet because I've gone stretches eating plant based and I still eat, you know, plant based meals. And yeah, I can hit my macros and I and I can feel good and look good and all of those things. Um, uh, I can talk about keto. We did keto years ago. We've done everything, different training styles, different diet styles. Um, 
I think that if we're going to be prescribing things or or talking to clients about, you know, different tactics, it definitely helps to have that real life experience in doing them. Right. And there's a time and place for different things and, and yeah. in different situations. It's nice to have those different approaches. Yeah. I know that you've used yoga quite a bit. Yeah. And I I'd yoga. love to hear, like, how are you yeah. using mm -hmm. yoga, you know, both in terms of for your lifestyle, but also for your competition goals and that kind yeah. of thing. Well, wait a second. How does yoga fit within bodybuilding? Oh, you didn't know? No, I didn't know. Please, <laughs> please tell me. Okay, so 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 there's I'm, I'm this is another thing kind of like macros I'm really hot on. I like to talk to people about this a lot. So, yoga there is so much more to yoga than what we are really told that it's great for. So, the number one thing that we all think yoga is great for is probably flexibility. And yeah, it's great for that. Um uh, the second one being maybe mindfulness, maybe mental health. You know, a lot of people go into yoga to kind of clear their mind and get into their body and actually be present. That's really that's really important for me as well. Um, and I have a yoga teacher who who makes us at the, at the beginning of the class, she makes us set an, an intention. And a lot of the time for me, it's something around presence. Sometimes I'm just like, be present, be present. And then other times it might be something else. Um, so that's important. However, um, for me, what I've really noticed is how it translates in the gym and then how what I do in the gym translates back to yoga. So it's really amazing. I've, I've been thinking about putting together some videos to actually show people what I'm talking about. So the, the body awareness and the posture that you use in yoga, you'll notice you will use it throughout different movements in the gym. So even down to just mountain pose. Mountain pose, we're just standing, right? You're just like standing there. However, the teacher will correct you and she'll have you kind of put your shoulder blade in your back pocket a little bit. Posture is really important. We will take out that anterior pel pelvic tilt and we will tuck our pelvis under a little bit. Our feet will be planted on the ground. Um, and guess what? If you're standing in the gym and you're about to do a squat or a lateral raise or a deadlift or literally most of the movements that we do, all those things I just mentioned need to be in place. So if you're learning how to, the very basics of just setting your body up correctly in yoga, you'll go use them. Um, I was struggling with down dog for a long time. It like wasn't, you know how, how down dog can just feel really kind of crappy on your shoulders sometimes. So I was struggling with the rotating under and my yoga teacher kept kind of giving me cues and she had me uh, bring my shoulder blades and my lats under one day in a certain way. And then I went in the gym the next day and it was back day and I went, oh shit, this is part of my lat pull down. Oh, now I get it. And it helped me to set something you taught me a long time ago, the way that you set your lats before you do the lat pull down. So it's not all just an arm movement. So it's really wild the way that I'm using yoga in the gym. And then also, of course, the strength and the form things that I'm learning in the gym, I go and take into yoga. So my yoga practice is really strong too. So yoga is super important to me. Um, it's also therapy for me. One thing though, I talk to my clients a lot about is that I, I really prefer that they not go in and do power yoga, hot yoga, inferno yoga, like these these like workout yoga classes. That's not really in line with the goals, in at least in the programs that I set up. Um, it can be fun to sweat, that's great, but that kind of yoga is a little bit more stressful on the body and it's not quite getting the benefits that I'm looking for. So same thing goes for Pilates. I'm looking to like slow it down, get present, get into my body, and I'm not trying to do a workout. If I need to work out, I'll go to the gym. So I encourage yin, gentle, restorative, hatha, shakti yoga. That is really more about getting a little bit more still. We are so aligned on that. I love yeah. that so much. Yeah. And I have people frequently, and I know some people like to go in and sweat. And also I yeah. think some people are under the impression that because they're sweating, that they're also burning more yeah. calories. But like, we don't need to do that. We right. Have, we, yeah, we have our program, Ex we have our macros. Exactly, yeah. and 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 it's and you're also getting dehydrated. So then you also yeah. need to make sure you're really hydrating. Yeah. And, and I completely agree with you. What I, what I found is that when I'm that hot, you know, or if I'm, I'm doing this exercise yoga, I'm not being as present because I'm just mm -hmm. thinking about how uncomfortable I'm I am sweating. most of the time. Yeah, rather you're just than trying to get through it, really. When I go to this class that I've been going to for a while now, it's it's amazing. And there are a lot of pauses. There's a lot of stillness. And she is talking throughout most of it. Um, her name's Michelle. She's at Shakti Yoga in Buffalo. And she's amazing. She's giving you so much wisdom and she makes you go really deep, like in, in you know, and 
Um, I get very still. And sometimes I end up with these wild epiphanies about maybe something that I'm processing, um, something that I'm working through mentally. And I do feel like I walk away and I just, you know, therapy is about 115 hour. This class is like $20. And I'm like, I just got a therapy. <laughs> you know? What a bargain. So it's amazing. Like you're getting body awareness and you're getting to actually get into your body and get out of your head, you know, all day we're just like it's it's just stimulus we're just overstimulated overstimulated and we have to at some point get quiet and, and get into our body well I, oh go ahead i was just gonna say I, I feel like i've had people resist me when i'm wanting them to do yoga oh, and usually yeah. that's why because yeah. they have that monkey mind and they feel like they yeah. go in and the brain is just going and that's the why, biggest thing yeah. though is that the only way to learn how to work with that is is mm -hmm. to do it and yeah. and then become the observer, you know, yes. rather than getting upset with yourself when your mind yeah. starts going like that, just going, hmm, that's an it. interesting yeah. thought, okay. You know, and, and the more I feel like we just let ourselves accept whatever's yeah. going on in the mind without judgment, the more our mind starts to still. And I know, mm -hmm. cause I am a monkey mind person. Same. It's always going 90 miles a minute. Yeah. So having that, I, I love that you brought that up. Yeah, that's why we do it. Like I have clients who, so Sorry. in all of my programs, I give, uh, I give breath work and meditation. And it's a little bit more kind of optional, work it into your plan however you want. You know, I let people experiment. Um, but there is a section on breath work and meditation and there are workouts, but really there's like guided meditations in my plans. And my client, you know, some clients will say, well, I, I can't meditate, I'm not good at it. And I say that that literally doesn't exist. There is no good or bad. There is only doing with meditating. Sam Harris says that you should go and meditate sitting in the middle of New York City. You know, you should be able to just sit and just deal with all of the chaos. Um, and I, I've learned a lot from him and his waking up app, um, which is a good intro introductory course to meditating. And he also uses the analogy of just boats floating by. Those are your thoughts. And you're just sitting on the shore and you're just watching them. And they're there. Like they are, we are going to think. That's the thing. People think that they have to clear their mind. Oh, I can't clear my mind. Yeah, neither can I. That's not what it's about. It's not about turning your brain off and like ascending like some like, you know, Buddhist or something like your brain is still going to be going. It's just can you let it go without judgment and observe it? And um, and that's that's really what it is. There really is no good or bad or like being talented at, at meditating. I don't I don't think that that's what it's about. <laughs> <clears throat> it's all about purpose and I, I just what what's your purpose in doing it yeah and and I think that in leaning into that but unfortunately we are we, we this conversation could go on all and we day. didn't do our check-in word and, and, and I know I know I just wrote that down so so normally when we start our conversations we do a yeah. check-in word so we miss okay. that which is okay um but we also do a check out word okay. um very much like your yoga teacher I don't know if she does a check out word but I know she does a check-in we and, do um. okay <laughs> all right so <laughs> okay so so for you and the check out word is just simply your intent your feeling, how you were present in this moment, whatever you want it to be. Um, I'll say present because we were talking about being in yoga and being more present and that's a huge goal of mine. I'm, my brain is usually several steps ahead, already either thinking about or worrying about the next thing, but I'm really just trying to be more present. What? You're doing what? What? You're huh? trying? What? Yeah, I'm you use, do, the, I'm use the T word. You're being more present. <laughs> <Use> the T <tea laughs> word. <laughs> yeah. You're, You're being more present. Yes. Well, Sam. that that concludes this conversation. Um, okay. Sort of. I kind of feel like the conversation is going to continue on. We got one more thing um, to talk about. Which, which <laughs> we, is we, what? We, we'll, we'll, we'll get there. We're going to have to have a part two. We'll do something. We'll have to have yeah. a part two. Yeah. Um, so for now, um, everybody, be good to yourself, be good yeah. to each other, and be safe. Thank yeah. you. Thank you for tuning in to Fit Body Lifestyle. We hope today's episode has left you feeling motivated and equipped to tackle your fitness goals, business challenges, and the daily dance of life. Remember to value progress over perfection. Life's tough enough alone. Find the chosen family around you to help you along the way. If you enjoyed today's episode, we'd really appreciate it if you would subscribe and leave us a review on your favorite streaming platform. And don't forget to follow us on Instagram at Fit Body Fusion.